Let's talk about chancery numerals. Let me say right up front, I'm not sure that there is a traditional chancery numeral. Uh, if Mr. Arrighi, the Italian monk in the 16th century, laid it down, I haven't been able to find it. Uh, and I see it done all different kinds of ways. So you're going to learn my way of doing <laughs> chancery numerals. Let me make that clear. And my favorite approach is to, let me draw some guidelines here. Let's say this is my X height guideline. Okay, you, you know what that means, right? This is where the letter X fits in there. Then there's ascenders and descenders, right? You can draw those guidelines if we want to. I think it looks chancery-ish. Did you get that? It looks kind of old English-ish. <laughs> if we have those numerals that some of them are inside the X height and some have ascenders and descenders, rather than the traditional American school book uh, norm where they all fit where they're the same size as capitals. So that's just my opinion. So that's the opinion that you're going to agree with today. <laughs> if that's the case, then the numeral one fits inside the X height and is very simple. It's very traditional. The only thing that I maybe have done to the numeral one is I've made this little extender just a tiny bit longer than normal. normal. And that, again, the reason is because I think that looks chancery-ish. <laughs> with me? So let me draw that, a smaller scale with the felt tip marker, a little bit long extender, and straight down. I don't do anything at the bottom. I just let it stay straight, square at the bottom, and then go to my calligraphy pen, my dip pen, so I get a nice, nice, discreet hook at the top, and straight down. Now you understand, I, I change scales, of course, at, at this at this scale, here is my X height indicator. Got it? So the one fits entirely inside that, uh, that boundary. That's the number one. The chancery cursive number two is very simple and pretty predictable. I do the entire thing inside the X height guidelines. One simple curve, holding your pen in the traditional angle with a nice straight base, maybe a little up hook at the end of it. That's the number two. Let me do the same thing now in a felt tip marker. So my, my X height indicator guidelines are a little bit shorter. Straight curve down to the base and then draw that baseline little hook up at the end. Very, very simple. Let me go to the dip pen where we get a little more discreet and fine lines. And we also get blobs of ink if we throw our pen around in a hurry for the video. You don't need to do that part. Here we go. One simple curve coming down to the baseline and then draw straight across and a little up hook at the end. Let me do it one more time. Curve all the way down to the baseline, draw straight across and a little up hook at the end. Simple enough, the number two. The number three. I have indicated here my guidelines. Here's my X height guideline, my ascender guideline, and my descender guideline. Because starting with numeral three, those guidelines become somewhat important. Let me tell you my feeling, my thinking, my uh, philosophy, <laughs> if you will, of the numerals in chancery cursive. And that is, anytime there's a bulbous, roundish part of the letter, it should appear inside the X height guidelines. If there are extenders, they go above and descenders go below. The number three, the numeral three, has actually two bulbous shapes. The question is, which one do we put here and which one do we put above or below? And my inclination is to make the top of the three fit inside the X height guidelines and then make the, the bottom half of the three a D sender. Now I'm going to modify that. You with me? I'm going to modify that ever so slightly. And again, because numerals are sort of a strange animal. I feel like this comes down too far. It's making this curve too small and this one too big. So even though my thinking is to have the, what I call the bulbous, the, the loops of the numbers fit inside our X height guidelines, I'm going to cheat the three a little bit. A simple curve 
but make it smaller so that it actually finishes there and then have the descender come down like that. And now I've got a three that has the right proportions and is going below the lines. Again, in my opinion, chancery numerals look more ch chancery-ish if we use this, this approach to some numbers are inside there, some go above, and some go below. Let me then do uh, new guidelines. Here's my x height. Here's my three, a curve, cheating a little bit, and then do, making the rest of the three a descender. Now, you'll notice I'm not doing, in a sense, the rest of the three, which would make it a very traditional American school book three. I'm just letting that last curve end a little bit uh, abruptly, again, because I want it to look like a chancery alphabet. Same thing with a dip pen, a curve. Now I think I cheated it too much that time. Let me do that again. There we go. Bigger curve and then the descender coming down and starting, stopping short of this big dramatic curve. Got it? I think that looks like a chancery number three. Chancery, the numeral four. Again, my philosophy is that the main body of the chancery numerals should take place inside the x height guidelines. So one approach would be to simply do a four like this. There we go. But I feel like that makes the four too large. So if you've seen the three already, you remember that I cheated on the three. And instead of going all the way to the baseline, I cut it a little bit short and then made the extender come down like that. I'm going to do the same exact thing on numeral four. I'm going to make it come down not to the baseline, but about two thirds of the way from to the to the baseline. Then a horizontal straight across. And I think a chancery four should be connected at the top. And then the tail can come straight down like this. And if you'd like, put just a little bit of a hook on the end of the four. And in my opinion, it will look just a little bit more chancery-like if you put that little hook at the bottom. Got it? That's the number four. Now let's do the felt tip version. Again, so changing my X height guidelines to something like that. Holding my pen the entire time in the traditional angle four and a little bit of a hook. Again, traditional angle on the nib and a hook. Let's see how that looks with a dip pen. This line should be thinner. There we go, that's nice. A horizontal, medium weight, and then the vertical is the heaviest weight of all the letters. There we go. And I feel like I'm, I'm cheating that a little bit too much. Let me come down a little further. There we go. So again, if I were at home practicing, I'd do a number of fours until I got to the point where I felt like it was in my hand, it was ingrained in my mind, and I would be doing it the same way every time. That's chancery numeral four. The numeral five. I've said I want the body or the loop of each number to basically take place inside the x height. So in the number five, I'm going to do the round part of the letter inside there and make the top part the extender. Got that? Let me take the extender all the way to the top and then the round part of the number five. That's all there is to it. For my taste, I would keep, just as we did in the number three, I would keep this curve truncated. Don't, don't make it come back up and around like that because to me that doesn't look chancery-like. So let me do that again. Straight down and across and then a curve that stops short, that looks to me like a number five. I suppose you could add a flag there, but to me, that, again, that doesn't, we're, we're, we're left with a lot of uh, creativity in the numeral category, and that does not look like a chancery thing to me, so I would leave it straight. Let me do it again with a felt tip marker, straight down, straight across, and then a curve that goes beneath the X height into the descender part of the letter. You with me? Like uh, the, the letter Y would be parallel to the five in that respect. Let me now do a calligraphy pen and do here out here in a clean piece of the paper straight down straight across 
and then a curve that goes into the descender zone and is rather truncated. I would call that a chancery number five. The numeral six then. Very predictably, I put the, the loop, the circle of the six in the X height guidelines and make the extender go above. Let me do it the other way around. One curve, there we go, and then the loop this way. So I make the body of the six in there, but I draw it by starting at the top, coming down, and then doing this curve. And I'm holding my pen in the traditional angle throughout the entire process. Let me do it. If these are my guidelines for the X height, here's the extender guideline. I start at the top of the extender, come down, and then finish this loop this way. Okay, very simple, quite predictable, I would think. That's exactly what you expected me to do. I would not do any, any kind of hook or any other device up there. I think that's unnecessary in this case. So let me do it down here in a clean piece of the paper. A simple curve and then the loop of the six that way. The number six, I think that'll do. All right, let's do our lucky number seven. There are a number of different ways we could do this. I'm, this is my X height guide indicator there. I'm going to put the, the main body of the seven inside the X height and treat the, the bottom part of the seven as an extender. Now, you see, I put a little hook there. I like that. The biggest option would be here, should we make this an S curve at the top? And again, I'm showing you, and my, your, your cheat sheet shows you what I've decided to do. I think that's a little bit too ornate for chancery, so I'm going to make that top line straight and then come down. Now, we could also add, I feel like, again, this is an option. I'll let you make this call, whether you put that horizontal line in the middle. And my feeling is it depends on the context. When you're doing something creative, there are places where you would like to add that, that additional line. Again, why? Because, at least for us Americans, that, that additional line in the middle of the seven looks a little old world, and chancery is an old world typeface. So there are times where I think that would be perfectly appropriate. Let me do it then, again, with a felt tip pen. Straight line, and then one simple curve coming all the way to the bottom of the descender uh, zone. You got that? To the descender guideline. And then this line, and I'm putting it not on the not on the bottom baseline of the of the X height. I'm putting it just a little bit above that. You see that? So my guidelines would be here. There's my X height. There's my descender. And no ascender, of course, on the seven. One more time. Let's do it with the calligraphy pen. Very simple. Little bit of a hook. Straight top line one simple curve and optional midline. There we go, the number seven. Let's keep going. Let's talk about the number eight. Again, I think it's pretty intuitive. I want the main body of most of my numerals to be in the X height zone. So I'm gonna create the larger, the larger O of the eight right there and treat the upper O, <laughs> the upper loop as an ascender, got it? And yes, you could you could do it as two S curves. I think this is a matter pretty much of taste. I am more inclined to do two separate circles. Part of the reason is because it's going to be easier to mimic, follow, imitate the italic slant if you do it separately. You can do either one. I feel like both ways look very chancery-ish, but I'm going to uh, opt for doing it as two separate O's. Let me do that then with the felt tip marker, starting this time with the top O. There's the top. The bottom O traditionally is larger. Good enough. I just want to make sure it matches the italics slant. There we go. Let me do it then with a calligraphy pen. where we can get those nice, thin, let me start with the, the base of the eight this time. 
We can get those nice thin lines better than we can with the felt tip calligraphy pen. There we go. That's all there is to it, the number eight. So the numeral nine, and you know exactly how I'm going to do this, even if you hadn't looked at the cheat sheet, because you understand that the body of the number I like to put inside the X height, so I'm going to put the, the loop there and treat the rest of the number nine as a descender, right? One large curve. Very easy to do. Small loop, small curve, big curve. I don't do anything down here, nothing like that. That's not very chancery in my opinion. Doesn't look very chancery-like at all. So I'm going to keep it very, 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 very simple. Let me do that with a marker. Holding the pen in a perfectly traditional angle. There we go, that's a nine. And with the calligraphy pen, the top loop, and the descender. Let me do it again, the top loop, and the descender. You could do this in your sleep. You are so good. <laughs> good job, let's keep going. And finally, the numeral zero. Again, you can probably predict, even if you hadn't looked at your cheat sheet, that I'm going to put the zero entirely in the X height guidelines. You might be asking, as I am, what's the difference between this and a lowercase o? Well, do you remember when we did the o, I recommended adding this little hook and leaving a little gap there. I think the difference between an o and a zero is there's no gap and there's no hook. It's just one contiguous circle. The other thing is because we want it to fit in with the numbers, I would make the O, the zero slightly wider. Most of our O's tended to be slightly vertical. The zero, I think, can be very close to a perfect sphere and fit right inside that, that guideline. Let me do another one here. Two strokes, pen held in the traditional position, 30 degrees or my number three and a half position. There we go. Let's try it with a felt tip marker. See if it still works. It does. Good. And then the bad boy, the calligraphy world, the dip pen, where we can get a nice discrete line, a nice thin line. And that will do. You can make zeros till the cows come home, won't cost you a penny. <laughs> I hope you got all these numbers down. You'll have fun practicing them. Thanks for watching.